I'm Nell Abram with FSRN Headlines. In Syria today, there were massive rallies both for and against President Bashar al-Assad. At least four people were killed by security forces. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says that scores of civilians were arrested today, including 60 schoolchildren. Syria has also reportedly admitted to planting landmines along the Lebanese-Syrian border to deter refugees from fleeing the eight-month crackdown on anti-government protesters. Jackson Ellers has more from Beirut. A Syrian man near the Lebanese border of Israel was reportedly the first victim of the new policy, losing a foot on Sunday after stepping on a recently planted landmine. Associated Press quoted a Syrian official as saying that Syria has, quote, undertaken many measures to control the borders, including planting landmines. Witnesses told AP that they had seen Syrian soldiers planting landmines on the border across from Lebanon's eastern Baalbek region. The continued exodus of Syrians fleeing to neighboring Turkey and Lebanon is proving an embarrassment for the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, whose government continues its brutal crackdown of anti-government protesters, calling for an end to Assad's rule. More than 5,000 Syrians have fled to Lebanon since March, and despite pressure from the United Nations and the Arab League, the Syrian regime shows no signs of letting up on the military crackdown of protesters. Jackson Allers, FSRN, Beirut, Lebanon. There's still no response from Damascus about an Arab League proposal to end the violent repression of dissent in the country. According to the UN, at least 3,000 people have died in the eight months of protests. Reports of events in Syria are impossible to verify. Foreign press remains barred from the country. And according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, Syrian bloggers and journalists continue to disappear at an alarming rate. Three more went missing in the past eight days. Unpiloted aircraft continue to fire airstrikes in Pakistan. According to the leader of an anti-drone campaign, two youth were among at least four people killed in North Waziristan last night. One of them, 16-year-old Tariq, took part just last Friday in an anti-drone rally in Islamabad. The drone attack that also killed Tariq's 12-year-old cousin was the fourth reported attack in five days. Despite early reports on Sunday that victims of another drone attack in the region were all militants, the nation reports that at least four of them were local chromite miners. Dozens of anti-drone protesters who were arrested in April go before a Syracuse, New York judge today. The Hancock 38 staged a die-in at the entrance to the U.S. Air Base from which Reaper drones are remotely piloted over Afghanistan. They're charged with refusing to comply with a police order and blocking traffic. A private in the U.S. Army was sentenced to 10 years in a South Korean jail today for raping a teenage girl. PFC Kevin Flippin was convicted of repeatedly attacking the girl after breaking into her room. U.S. forces in the region are now under a curfew. Students and teachers were back at school today in Bennington, Vermont, after both sides gave preliminary approval to the terms of a new three-year contract Monday night. Carl Etnier reports. The nine-day strike ties the record for the longest in Vermont's history. The school district's 300-plus teachers had been working without a contract since June 2010. Darren Allen, spokesperson for the State Teachers Union, said that just getting back to the framework of their previous agreement was one of the teachers' primary victories. That was one of the most important factors that led to the strike, is that the boards did not uh, want to negotiate uh, based on their expired contract, but wanted to negotiate based on their own unilaterally imposed terms. According to Allen, the side split down the middle an increase in teachers' contributions to health insurance premiums, and teachers will receive a pay hike in each of the next three years. No one from the school district was available immediately for comment. Carl Etnayer, FSRN, Montpelier, Vermont. New sentencing guidelines go into effect today, and people already serving time under the old guidelines may see their stints shortened. The Fair Sentencing Act was passed last year, and this summer it was made retroactive. The law aimed to balance sentences meted out for crack versus powdered cocaine. How many will walk free today is not clear, but some 1,900 people qualified for immediate release. The Supreme Court heard arguments today in a case about prisoners' rights. The question is whether an inmate at a privately run federal prison has the same rights as one in a government-run institution. While an inmate in a privately run prison, Richard Pollard says he was denied adequate medical care and subjected to painful shackles after he broke his arm. 
His lawyers say he should have the same right to seek judicial relief as he would if he were in a publicly run prison. And Bank of America capitulated in the face of public outcry, account closures, and a threatened bank run, announcing today that they will not charge a $5 debit card fee after all. For FSRN from Tampa, Florida, I'm Nell Abram.